Hallelujah. Glory to God. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. I'm so happy that you're, you're with us. Amen. Today. Amen. Glory to God. That we'll be able to just share some things together. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. And I want to let you know this morning. Amen. Glory to God. It's a good morning. Amen. God. Glory to those right there, amen. I want to say a special uh, thank you to all those who have served and have uh, given their lives, amen, for keeping us safe. And I wanted to say happy Memorial Day because I'm remembering you and all of those around you. And I remember the people who were in my life and all those that uh, that have served, amen. Glory to God. But you know what? I um truly know that there's a, a word in the house today. Amen. Glory to God. And I um I want you to uh take the opportunity to know that there's a word in the house. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. And um I want to get the announcements in and out of the way. Amen. Glory to God, because I want the uh, I want everybody to be able to get an understanding of what God is getting ready to do. Amen. This wonderful morning. Amen. Glory to God for those that are on Facebook and those that are on Zoom and those on the conference line. Amen. God be the glory today. Amen. May he continue in your story. Amen. Glory to God. I know I got our a wonderful uh and 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 exciting um evangelist lady sunshine on the line and she going to bring forth our announcements please listen to it cuz we got a couple of things out there that we have going on not only in a few weeks amen glory to god amen listen to the woman of god as she brings forth something that you should hear amen Amen, amen. Welcome to Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and thou will starve. Feeding your faith and thou will starve. We thank you for joining us this wonderful, beautiful day that the Lord has made that we will be glad in it. We'd like to remind everyone about our new services coming right now uh, and upcoming. We have a Father's Day service that we will be having, and we invite you, and we'd like for you to come on and invite someone, and come on and let's have a very good time in God. Also, we have upcoming events in June. On June 11th, you can join us live streaming, or come on out and join us at Holy Word in Connecticut. And more information will be posted right there on Facebook and your favorite social media. That being said, we'd like to let everyone know, especially first-time visitors, our services weekly. We have Monday Bible study, 7 p.m., Tuesday and Thursday on the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you every other Wednesday for the book club, for the book that we're reading, and the times and dates that we are meeting, please visit our website at wordofthelamb.org. <clears throat> once a month, every Wednesday, on once a month, I should say, we have the men's ministry meeting and the women's ministry meeting. And you can find that information right on our website. And every Friday, we have Friday Encouraging Word, where many times we have guest speakers, Bible trivia, poetry night, and much more. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Encouraging Word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out and don't be a part of the I Should Have Been There Club. And every first Saturday of the month, we have first fruit player between the hours of 12 noon and 1 p.m. If you got the first fruit of all that we have, and every Sunday, you get it right here, live on Facebook. 
and live on Zoom and your favorite social media with Pastor Brian Bryant, bringing the word of God to the people of God for such a time as this. And every Sunday at 10 a.m., we have our Little Lambs Church for Boys and Girls. Why don't you bring your little lamb to learn about the great Lamb of God? And we have Unity Prayer, strong as ever. Unity Prayer is three times daily. You can pick a time where you want to just meditate and speak to the Lord and listen to His guidance and instructions. Those times weekly are 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. Join us. We're praying for a global community. And also, at this time, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for your generous giving. Right there on your screen, you can see a QR code, a text to give, a donate here button, and a... And we want to thank you. And if you'd like to donate supplies for book bags for the children, anything of that nature, please contact us through our email address. It's word of the lamb at outlook.com. And if you just want to know what must I do to be saved, contact us. Word of the lamb at outlook.com. Our pastor will get back to you, evangelists will get back to you, and we will point you to the right direction, that is Jesus Christ, the truth, the way, and the light. At this time, again, we embrace you from our family to yours, we thank each and every one of you, and we turn these services over now to our own beloved Pastor Brian Bryant. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus amen amen thank you evangelist lady sunshine amen glory to god hallelujah all right y'all i don't know about everybody else but i do know that god has been good amen i know that he's been moving in our life and amen i i know that he's been moving around in yours as well we've uh gotten to a uh, part of the service amen glory to god well i believe it's time for the word of god oh i've uh know that there's so many people out here who have other things that they really want to do today amen but you know what our first and foremost thing is to give god some glory amen because he did wake us up this morning he did bring us upon our way Oh, I do have a word for you today, man. Glory to God. But Lord, I want to start off with a prayer. Most heavenly and kind Father, we come before you as humble as we know how. We ask you, Father God, that you will look upon us in such a special way, Father God. Lord, I'm asking that there'll be more of you and less of me, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, that the words of the mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for I was glad once again when they told me, let's go into the house of the Lord. My feet have been standing by the gates of Jerusalem. For a day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God. Giving honor to God and Jesus Christ is truly the head of my life. To all the XMs meaning Christians, uh, to each and every individual around, amen, glory to God, each and every one of you in their perspective places. Wanted to say good morning to you. God bless you. I'm thanking God for Deacon Steve and Deacon Sunita, Evangelist Outlaw, and Henry Outlaw, and Evangelist Lady Sunshine, her husband James, Evangelist Diane Hooks, God and her entire family. I want to thank God for Sister Charlene Morales and her family, amen, glory to God, and my Facebook technician, amen, to Sister Bridget, our resident poet, and all those out there, Sister Gwen, and all the rest of those individuals around there, Sister Shireen, and all those who are connected to us, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, I'm talking to you on the last, uh, I believe the last uh, Sunday of June, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to the name of Jesus, glory to God, I also would like to give a shout out to all those who had birthdays in the month of May, amen, glory to God, happy birthday to each and every one of you, amen, glory to God, May the day that you were born be special and that you'll know that God made those days just for you, for he knew who you were and whose you are. Amen. May he continue to bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I have a word for you today. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. And, uh, Glory to God, I give you my title today is God will not leave you or forsake you. God would not leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. I um, found it in my mind, I said, uh, this is an easy subject, Lord, that you've given me, but um, it's not to do anything but to remind us of some stuff but the lord also wanted me to let them know that what forsake means amen glory to god for the word forsake uh, according to webster means to renounce or turn away from entirely oh god will not renounce from you he will not turn away from you entirely he won't do those things amen we have a habit ourselves oh glory to god to go out there and turn ourselves away, but the Lord won't turn himself away from He's not leaving you or forsaking you. There's some things that are going on in our world like that. Deuteronomy, I'm reading from the English Standard Version today, amen. Glory to God. And I'm going to be reading some scriptures, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you desire to hang out with me, you can always go to Isaiah and, and park yourself at the 43rd uh, chapter, amen, and just wait for me to get there. But as I like to say, I hope you have your sword with you, and the sword is the only offensive weapon that you have, amen, glory to God. You need to read it for yourself so that individuals won't err in the ways, and that way you can get what God has for you out of it, amen, to glory to God. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you and he will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Uh, the scripture uh, tells us not to fear and God will not leave us. My question to you is, do you believe this? Hmm? Do you believe this when everyone and everything is going wrong? Oh, come on, somebody. 
Right now, some people are going through some scenarios similar to this. Seems like everything and every everybody is going wrong. Can I get a amen somewhere? Amen. amen. Glory to God. It seems like every direction that you go in, there's always something in the way, an obstacle that's causing you to have some issues. You you go into the door and the and the door don't want to open. Uh, you 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 go to your car and it don't want to start. Um, you're having problems uh at the job because the people got an attitude and uh um your kids are acting up and uh uh even the dog and the goldfish ain't looking at you right. Amen. Glory to God. It, it might have a bad day it might be something going on going going on and you feel like god seemed like he might be far away from you but the bible is telling you that he's not far away you need to just pull up on some things see uh, are you understanding what the lord is saying to you see the lord is reminding us in deuteronomy the 31st and the 6th chapter one verse above it a couple of verses above what i just read said be strong and courageous i'm reading from the english standard version right it says be strong and crazy do not fear or be in dread of them for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. The word keep coming to you. He's trying to let us know that he's with us. Because there's a lot of times when we get doubtful, there's a lot of times when we're going through some stuff, but we feel like we're farther away for some of us. Sometimes we feel that 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 God's not listening to us, but he's hearing every word. Some of us think that we have to go in a certain way because God is not going to be listening to us because of what we have done, said, did, thought, or dreamed. Oh, I, I want to let you know that the, the Lord said, I will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. That means that he's with you regardless of the situation. Joshua 1 and 9 tells us that I have not, I commanded you to be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. A reminder for you, amen. You, sometimes you might even need to write these scriptures down because there's going to be days when you might not feel the same way, amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. You might feel that you're feeling a little lost, but God said that I'm with you. Amen. And I'm with you. Are you with me? Isaiah, the 43rd chapter says is like this, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. He was for he, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Hold up. The Lord has already said to you, I've called you by your name. You are his. Yet we still sometimes get doubtful because of the things that go on around us. Amen. It goes to shake us and try to take us out of our scenarios. It could be anything, including someone else's conversation that you overheard or someone trying to judge you for who they believe you to be. Oh, I wish somebody would 
have a conversation and have have an have a thing and be able to say amen or i'm the man amen glory to the name of jesus glory amen, to god amen. Amen. You know, we, we get to these particular spots, but you remember that God said that he formed you and fear not for I have redeemed you. Mm -hmm. He said, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Oh, how many of us have gone through the floods of life? Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. How many of us have took the opportunity to go out there and just shake some stuff off because we are in the midst of it and we're walking and it feels like we just got our heads above water because the rest of our body seems to be covered. But God said that I'll walk when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Um, and through the rivers. Mm hmm they shall not overwhelm you. That even though there might be a, a, a rough walk, amen, but they're not going to overtake you, amen. They might seem like they're going to do that, but you know if you're walking in the word of God, those things will not come to pass. It says, God says, when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. Well, how many of us have been on a hot seat? How many has been in a scenario where it just seems like everything just coming up against us? But yet when we stay in the word and say, I'm a believe in the Lord, I'm going to stand on his word. Amen. Even though those things around you, it seems like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, I'm just talking to myself. Y'all just happen to be listening. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Oh, God is just reminding you. See, I'm giving you some reminding texts because you need those when you get out here in the world and everything seems to be kicking on you. When you feel like you're not doing anything, when you're feeling like you're stagnant. Some of us think that we're good. I'm good where I'm at, but you haven't made any progress. You desire to stay in some particular spot, but you haven't took a step out. Some of us want to wiggle our toes outside and we yet not understand that we got to put our whole selves into some things. But when God's got you, he says, I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. That means he's got you. That means you can step out there, even though it might be in some area you might not have seen before. You might not have been in before. Just make sure that you stay sure footed or as they like to say, make sure that your anchor holds to the solid rock, which is Jesus. Oh, the Bible also tells us in, Deut um, in, in, in Isaiah 43, amen, glory to God. He said that, um, I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom crush in Siva in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. Oh, I want to let you know that for some reason, some of us right now sometimes don't know that if we're feeling the word of God and we don't know if he loves us, you questioning whether you are. And God has already told you ahead of time that I love you. Oh, the Bible also tells you as again in, in Isaiah 43, because you are precious in my eyes, amen. God considers you to be a very precious thing and honored, meaning that he loves your spirit. The spirit that you have with him, he loves you. I gave men in return for you, people in exchange for your life, Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. 
I know that at times, even the ones that we love sometimes go astray. I know that at times, the ones that we love don't always want to hear what we have to say. But if you keep standing in your faith, keep standing where you are, keep understanding the word of God, God's going to gather them back to where they need to be. I will say to the North, give up, and to the South, do not withhold, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Oh, I'm giving you something to fight with. See, because there's some words that you will say, but these are the words of God spoken so that you can get an understanding about the God that you serve. He said, I will not leave you or forsake you. Well, I'm not turning away from you. I just need to know if you're going to turn away from me. Oh, the Bible also says that uh, everyone who is called by my name, when whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are blind yet have eyes, who are deaf yet have ears. All the nations gather together and the people assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witness to prove them right and let them hear and say it's true. You are my witness declares the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen. I'm trying to get you an understanding of who you are. And God has chosen you. Amen. A chosen vessel. Amen. Glory to God. God said, I, I've chosen you that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. For some of us are still wondering if God is still talking. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no savior. I declare and saved and proclaim when there is no strange God among you and you are my witness, declares the Lord. And I am God. Oh, I need you to get an understanding that the Lord is trying to tell you something. He just wants you to get a better understanding of where he is. He's saying to you, I am God. He wants you to get an understanding of letting you know who he is. And yours the things for you to proclaim. You're going to be in an area where you're going to have to pull up on some of these things. And reading this again is going to strengthen you. Oh, I'm just trying to give you something for your future. <laughs> Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He also, it also says that also... 13, also henceforth, I am he. Well, there is none that can deliver from my hands. I work and who can turn it back? When God has got you, ain't nobody gonna take you out of his hand. When he's saying that I'm holding you, that means he's holding you. You just gotta trust in your mindset that he is. And you got to stand up on that. And you got to walk in that direction. You got to have a made up mind. How many of us have a made up mind? 
how many of us took the opportunity this morning to say, I'm going to have a made up mind that no matter what goes on, I'm going to follow the Lord. Amen. I don't have anything else to give but my love for you, O oh Lord. And I'm going to share it with all I can, not because of who I am, but because of who you are in me. Somebody, amen. somebody better go ahead and let it be known, amen, that there's some things out there that people just don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to you and the Lord, you got a personal relationship and you should be proud to share your personal relationship with the Lord because he has not left you and he has not forsaken you. Amen. Glory to God. Even though we might have done the reverse. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> amen uh oh uh oh now the bible also speaks about this it says thus says the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel for your sake i send to babylon and bring them all down as fugitives even the childing in the ships where they rejoice i am the lord your holy one the creator of israel your king Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariots and horses, armies and warriors. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things. Okay, hold on. God said that he's going to put your enemies over at rest and he's going to cause them not to even be bothered, not to even bother with you. Even though there's some, some of them might be over there looking like they huffing and puffing, but they know what? They still can't blow your house down. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But remember what it says right here. Come on, y'all. Read that little part. Remember not the former things. So there's some stuff that you got going on in your past that you remember that you're going to have to love. If you're working with the Lord, you got to let those things go. What happens sometimes, the problem is that we let it go, but some people who know you will always like to bring it back up. People are quick to tell you about what you ain't doing. But how many of them are quick to tell you about the things of God that they see in you? Only a few. But you don't need validation from a man. You don't need validation from a woman, from a child, from any particular body. The only validation you need is what God has given you, and he'll show it to you because they says that you'll they'll, they'll know you by your fruit. Oh, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible also tells us that uh, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Oh, come on now. Wait a minute. This is what the Bible says now. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. So that means the former things that you used to do or to consider the former things that you could have done. Let them go. Behold. I am doing a new thing. I'm talking to somebody today. You're getting ready to be understood that if you sat there and start reading it and you got to that 19th verse in Fort Isaiah 43 and 19 and read it for yourself and proclaimed it out loud. You'll know what God is saying. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Oh, God's trying to let you know something. I'm doing something in you, and yet you might not perceive it because you're still holding on to the old things. When I told you I wasn't going to leave you or forsake you, I'm trying to break you out of that scenario. The Lord gives you some other things to let you know that he got your back. He says, I'll make a way in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Oh, how many of us have been in the wilderness? 
Come on, there's some stuff going on in your life that you've been in the wilderness about. I want to talk to some of y'all who are still in the wilderness. You're walking around, you're trying to find your way, find your direction in the wilderness. But God says, I'll make your way in the wilderness. I'm going to bring you out of some scenarios, but I'm going to make a way in your wilderness. And the rivers, and I'll, and I'll make rivers in the deserts. Oh, what that means is that your dry places once again are over. He means that he's going to put some things there. He said, the wild beast will honor me, the jackal and the ostrich, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to drink, to give drink to my chosen people. In the midst of the areas that you're in, in some of the problems that we're going through right now, he's giving you something. I'm going to make it so that it is well with you. That even in the midst of some stuff and why we're going through some problems, people are looking at you and saying, how is this person prospering and flourishing? Because God is the one doing the watering. Somebody say I'm watered by God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. And glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Sister Serene. I know I I know I got some some people on the line and I know they might be doing a few things, but I, I know that they're saying something. Even if I can, even if they're not saying something over here, I still know that they're talking. Amen. Glory to God. Because you're not proclaiming it for me. Ain't got nothing to do for me. It's because it's something you're doing for yourself. And I know that y'all are doing it. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. The Bible still says this. It says, the people who I formed for myself, that they might de de my, that they might declare my praise. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. Oh, come on. There's some times when we go through some stuff and we don't call upon the Lord. We might call upon him on the surface, but we didn't call upon him in the deepness of our soul. Some things you say, though, I, got, I, I could take care of this, right? And the more you try to take care of it, the worse it gets. You ever, anybody ever been in that scenario? I know I have. You know? See, you have, you, you have not brought me out. You have not brought me your sheep for burnt offering or honored me with your sacrifice. I have not burdened you with offerings or wearied you with frankincense. You have not brought me sweet cane with money or satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifice. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, oh, come on, that's how much he loves you. I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Oh, it ain't got nothing to do with you. He says, I'm blotting out your transgressions for his sake. Mm-hmm. And I will not remember your sins. Some of us still holding on to the fact that they don't think that they can come out of the sins that they're in. But the Lord doesn't want to hold on to your sin. All he wants you to do is confess that you had them and go forth and say, I can't get through this. Even though at that times, and don't get me wrong, y'all. You can, you can, you can. Say I'm doing something, you might even have a habit you're trying to break. It takes a little while to break the habit. Just because you fail doesn't mean you don't get back up and keep trying. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody today. God will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says this in verse 25 once again. It says, I, and this is 43 and 25. It says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for your own sake. And I will remember not, I, re, I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us argue together. Set forth your case that you may prove right. Your first father sinned, and your mediators transgressed against me. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Therefore, I will proclaim, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary and deliver Jacob to the utter destruction in Israel through revealing. I know, y'all, that the times are tough. But believe in the word of God. These scriptures are written many times to help us with our unbelief. Many of us have them. Many of us have some doubts. Remember what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood a holy nation, a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellency of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Isaiah 44 tells us, but now hear, O Jacob, my servant, whom I have chosen, thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb, who will and will help you. There's times when you think that God's not doing any particular thing, but he says, I formed you, I will help you. Are we only seeking the Lord when we're in trouble? No. How about when we're in the areas of our life when things are going well? Are you leaving the Lord and forsaking him? Because some of us have that ability to go out there and only call upon the Lord when times of trouble. But what about when you have those times of goodness? What about when you have those times of excellency? What about when things are going so well? Are we still leaning and calling upon the Lord? Are you still getting up saying thank you because not every day is promised and you don't even know what's going to happen in the next second. So you still have to give God the glory because he's bringing you through every single thing. He says, fear not, O Jacob, my servant. Just run who I've chosen, for I will pour water on the thirsty land, uh huh, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offering, and my and my blessing on your descendants. God wants to take care of you. When He says, "I'm not going to leave you or forsake you," with some things He wants to do for you, but all He's asking for you is a yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do this. Yes, Lord, I'm going to give you with my whole heart. Yes, Lord, I'm, I'm going to share everything that you have given me. He says that I'm going to pour upon your descendants and they, will, and they spring up among the grass like willows by the flowing streams. This one will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call on the name of Jacob and another will write on his hand, the Lord's and his name and his and name himself by the name of Israel. Besides me, there is no God. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and the last besides me there is no god 
who is like me. Let us proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. I had I not told have I not told you of the old from the old and declared it? Are you my witnesses? Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. The folly of idolatry. All who fashion idols are nothing. And things they delight in do not profit. Mm -hmm. The witness neither sees nor knows that they may be put to shame. Who fashions a God or casts an idol that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his companions shall be put to shame and the craftsmen are only human. Let them all assemble, let them stand forth. They shall be terrified. They shall be put to shame together. The iron smith shall take a cutting tool and work it over the coals. Oh, I'm trying to tell you that some of the things that we have, uh, some of the stuff that's going on, we might have to let it go because we're looking at some of those things right there and leaning on some stuff that's not of God. I'm talking to somebody. I ain't talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. I'm one of the, I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to help you right now. And then you become hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches a line. He marks out the pencil. He shapes it in with his plane and marks it with his compass. He shapes it like a figure of a man with a beauty of a man to dwell in a house. He cuts down cedar or he chooses a cypress tree or an oak and let it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He, hallelujah, he, thank you, God, plants a cedar and the rain nourishes it. Then it becomes fuel for a man. He takes part of, of it and he warms himself. He kindles a fire and Bakes bread, also makes a God and worships it. Oh, come on now. You see what he just said to you? God said that they go out there and they make a God sometimes that are out here and they say, I go and worship on the idol, but the idol's already something that's been carved up, the chiseled out, or something of that nature from something that already is going to be used for something else. He said, against the idol and God and birth and, and, and well, and, and God, he's talking about with little G's. And he makes an idol and it falls down before it. Half of it, he burns in the fire. The other half, he eats meat, roasts it, and is satisfied. Also, he has warmed himself and says, ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the rest of it he makes into a god, his idol, and falls down to it and worships it. He prays to it and says, deliver me, for you are my god. They know not, nor do they discern, for he has shut his eyes so that they cannot see, and their hearts are so that they cannot understand. No one considers, nor is their knowledge of discernment to say, half of it is burned in the fire. I also baked bread on its coals. I roasted meat and have eaten, and I shall make the rest of it an abomination. Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes, a dual heart, and leads them astray, and he cannot deliver him or say, Is there not? A lie in my right hand. The Lord redeems Israel. Amen. 
Remember these things, O Jacob, and Israel for your servant, for I formed you. You are my servant. Oh, God's trying to tell you once again. He just keeps reminding you of who you are. <coughs> Somebody say amen. <coughs> God is keeps reminding you of who you are. He keeps reminding you of who you are. But yet other people are going to continually try to tell you that you are not this or that. If God is reminding you who you are, how can somebody who's made by the Lord tell you what you're not when God already told you? I know that somebody right now whose feelings got hurt by somebody, but you let them feelings go. You don't worry about what other people are saying or doing. It has nothing to do with you. Even if it hurts your feelings, it's not what God said. Because if God called you and said that you're something or you're going to do something, you can best believe it's going to happen. I'm trying to help somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord redeems. Them. Remember these things, O Jacob, for you are my servant. I formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. You will not be forgotten by me. You will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Somebody is still in the midst of looking at all of the things that they're going through. And somebody is trying to remind them of all the problems or the sinful things that they are gone through or was going through. And yet they're saying to them, right as we speak, what, kind, what are you doing right now? Because you know, you did all these things. Now you're looking for somebody to forgive you. The enemy doesn't want you to be forgiven. He doesn't want you to know that you can be forgiven. He wants you to know that God said, come to me and I will blot out your transgressions. Whether your transgressions are little or much. God has an opportunity to blot out your transgressions if you come to him. He says, come to me, return to me for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, O depths of the earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, O forests, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and will glorify and will be glorified in Israel. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of liars and makes fools of diviners, who turns wise men back and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of of his servant and fulfills the counsel of his messenger who says of Jerusalem she shall be inhabited and the cities of Judah they shall be built and I will raise up their ruins oh I want to stop right there for a second some of us have had some stuff that's been in shambles some of us have been in some scenarios where things are just not going well. It looks like everything is crumbling around you. 
But the Lord just said right here that I will raise up their ruins. So the things that are of God, that people have thought that might have been crumbling, God has sat there and he's going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to speak some words right now into some people. There's going to be an influx of individuals coming on into this ministry. There's going to be people knocking at the doors. Some people are going to be calling. Some are going to be emailing. People are going to be coming around and individuals are going to be wanting to hear the word of God in different places. The places where God had a God had, is moving where the enemy has tried to ruin you. Oh, I'm talking to the person right now who just came across this on a, a on a whim, just happened to pass by, and you just saying that my life is a shamble right now, that things are seeming to be ruined, everything doesn't seem to be right, I don't seem to be getting any kind of headway, I don't know what I should do, and I'm telling you right now to try Jesus, it'll be the best thing you ever did in your life. He says, he says to the deep, be dry. This is what God will say. When, if, you, if, if you wait too deep, he says, be dry, and I will dry up your rivers. Oh, for some of us, we're drowning in some stuff right now. God says, be dry. He's going to move those away. Don't we have some rivers going on in our lives, y'all? Don't we got some stuff like that? And God said, let them, he said, let them, he said, let, he said to the deep, be dry and I'll dry up your rivers. Who said to Cyphus, he is my shepherd and he shall fulfill all my purposes. Oh, he's calling you and said, every purpose that I put before you, you're going to fulfill for me because I'm going to take care of you because I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. I have been with you even in the midst of it. Even when you couldn't see me, I was still carrying you. Even when you was crying out, I heard every word. Even when you thought I wasn't hearing, I heard you. Even when you said to myself, where am I? And I said, here I am. And sometimes you said, I'm falling. He said, but I'm catching you he said sometimes I felt like I fell to the ground he said I made the ground soft and he's saying to Jerusalem she shall be built and of the temple your foundation shall be laid oh God is trying to do something for you for those who are sitting there thinking that he has left you. Some of them have sat there and thought that he might have forsake you, but God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm trying to help someone today. Somebody right now is thinking about wanting to do some things, wanting to make a change, but are afraid to make the change. I hope you're hearing me right now. If you're afraid to make the change, it might be something that's causing you some issues, might be causing you some problems, might be causing you not to move. It might be fear, but God said, do not fear. It might be the fear of wanting to move to the next level. It might be a fear of wanting to step into the unknown. It might be the fear of trying to get into a scenario because some of us don't like to be comfortable don't like to be uncomfortable, but sometimes we have to stand in the uncomfortability. Sometimes we got to come out of the shell that you called yourself to be in because God did not harness you to be in a shell, but he sold you, he wanted you to be out there to express the word. And for somebody else, I want to let you know that it's never too late. Oh, somebody need to know this. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Miller. God bless you, Sister Bridget. God bless you, Sister Morales. God bless you, Sister Serene. God bless you, Evangelist Lady Sunshine, Evangelist Outlaw. God bless you, Deacon Stephen, Deacon is neither. Just letting them know so that you can bring this forth to them. Let them know that it's not too late to let them know that it's not too late. Somebody sitting there thinking it's not too late. They might be laying on their deathbed, but it's not too late. Somebody went and did something wrong, but it's not too late. God has not forgotten you. And in Isaiah, the 55th chapter and the seventh verse, I'm almost done, y'all. We are told, let the wicked forsake his ways. 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. I'm going to stop right there for a second before I go to these last little words. God said that he will abundantly pardon whatever you have done in your lifetime right now. Whatever you have done right at this moment, you can change it and stop right now and accept God for who God is and allow him to come in your house and come into your heart, come into your mind, come into your soul and change some things and stay in his direction. And he said, if you come to me and ask for forgiveness and you'll come to me, he says, I'll blot out your sins. That means not saying it and saying that sitting and go back to where you were. Because if you come to God and then go back to where you were, it might be a little worse for you because now you already know what the problem and the, and the aspect will be. But when you come to God, you got to let go of those things. It might not be an easy road. It won't be an automatic for some people. It might be an eventual thing. But it's just like anything else. If you will allow God in your life, you will start to see that the other things dissipate. There was a time in my life when I wanted to go out and I didn't want much of God, but I wanted more of the world. But I started to get God a little bit more on the inside and I wanted to know him for myself because of some situations that had went on with me and I started to get an understanding and the more I got an understanding, the more I wanted to know about the Lord thy God and the less I wanted to hang out in the world. The more I wanted to know about God, the other stuff started to fall away. Oh, we still got some things we hang on to. We got some habits that we still go on with, and we know that those habits are not right. But now you need to take a personal thought. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. And you need to take an opportunity to say these things that I have. Are they now my vices that I can let go to you, Lord? I know this is an issue with me. I know this is a problem with me. I know that this is something that's hanging on with me, Lord, but I got to give it to you. Because I can't seem to shake it. So I'm asking you to take it away. See, the Lord said that I will not leave you or forsake you. God will not leave you or forsake you. My question to you is, have you left him? And if you left him, come back. Have you forsaken him? And if you've forsaken him, ask for forgiveness and come back. For the Bible says, come back and return to me. I have redeemed you. God is calling you back from your places that you know you have done wrongly. And he's saying to you, come back to me. And like a cloud, I'll block out your sins. So that you can spend time with me. Because I know you. But I want you to know me. 
in your lifetime, I have never left you or forsake you. I've been with you even when you wasn't hearing me. In your hard-headedness, I was still there. And in your despair, I am still with you. When you call on me, I'm an answer. You might not have liked what I was saying. Because when you called on me, I might have sent somebody to tell you something you might not wanted to hear. But I would never give up on you. Have you forgotten? Or have you forgotten? Or have you forgave? Or have you not? Come to me. Have you not knocked on my door? See, because I say in the Bible, like I always said, that I, I go, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone would open the door, I will sup with them. I'll be with them. These are the words that God, and this is the word that Christ is using. He's knocking at the door, trying to remind you that he had not leave you, he had not forsaken you, but you had tuned him out from hearing what he had to say. If you're that person today, if you're that individual today who has tried to tune God out but decided that I am tired of listening to the other tunes and I want to tune back into the Lord. Now I'm gonna let you know if you're desiring to be saved, I can't save you. Jesus Christ is the only one who can. But what he wants from you is a yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, I desire to be saved. Yes, Lord. I desire for a change. Yes, Lord. I desire to let my fear moved. Yes, Lord. I desire to be in your presence. Yes, Lord. I desire to stand with you. Yes, Lord. I desire to have my ears open so I can hear you. If you desire these things, if you're saying to yourself, I want to make a change that tomorrow I want to be different than I was today, I've got to make an opportunity to do something better in my life. I can promise you this. I can't remember what it would be like without Christ. I believe, as the song would say, I'd be like a ship without a sail, tossing to and fro. Oh, the moment that I said yes, the moment that I called upon Christ. And I mean, really called upon him. I mean, when I decided that I would make an effort to say, I don't care about the things that I got going on in my life. Those things I'm going to put before God. I got to be an open book and I got to let some of that go. Well, I'm talking to somebody right now who's trying to live that double life. You go to church. You praise God. And then as soon as you can, you become Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Come out of those scenarios. Come out of them situations. For me and my house, I choose to serve the Lord. 
if you're desiring to be saved. You got a hunger in your mind that I'm going to be something different. I want to do this for me and my family. I want to do this for the Lord thy God. I'm desiring to be saved. For I must be saved so that my household will be saved. If you are, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you call if you're on Facebook? One, three, one, two, three, three, two, oh, three, two, oh, two, one, 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 zero. Use conference code nine, four, zero, seven, nine, two. Amen. Our Facebook technician will truly put it up there for you. Amen. And my sister Bridget will, it was one, three, oh, two, two, oh, two. One 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 zero. Use conference code nine four zero seven nine two and give us a call. Amen. Any one of my sisters on there will be doing that for us. Amen. Or all of them, they will sit out there and let you know where to go there. And while we're on the line, there's someone who desires to be saved. If you're on our conference line and you desire to be saved, just say I do. And I have. Evangelists and sisters and brothers online. If you desire to be saved and you're on Zoom, just let us know. If you're hearing this at a different time and desire to be saved, send us an email at word of the lamb at outlook.com. Give us your name. Give us a number. Give us a time we can reach you. And we will call you and conversate with you. Or oh, we like to have the conversations so we can talk about God. If you're dropped the ball, if you said to yourself that I messed up and I Know the Lord, but I messed up and I'm looking for something that I can't seem to find my way. I want you to stop and just take an opportunity to let us pray for you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Bridget. Glory to God. Father God. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me, with me, to me, and around me. Father, I'm asking you, Father, that you forgive me for everything that I have done, said, did, thought, or even dreamed. I repent right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Father God, that you make me new. Everything that I had before won't contain me today. But Lord, I know that you will make all things new. And Father, I thank you for making me a new creature in you. Now, Father, I ask you that you will strengthen me and even hold me in the areas where I am the most weakest at. And I ask you to have your way in the matchless and mighty name of Christ Jesus. Father, I also ask you, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen and bless us. That even out of our own mouths, Father, we'll be able to bring others to Christ. I ask these things and even more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. For those that are on the line, amen. Glory to God. If you prayed that prayer, I so much thank you for being back in the fold of God. But remember, amen. Glory to God. As Jesus said, go, but do not sin anymore. Amen. Glory to God. I also want to ask you if you're desiring, hallelujah, a church home. 
and you're saying to yourself, I'm looking for a place to, to be, amen. I really consider this to be a really good ministry, amen. I don't think that I'm alone in that aspect, amen. Glory to God. I'm asking if you desire to, looking for a church home, we always ask you that you will go on our website, www.wordofthelamb.org and look upon what we believe in and see if it's something that you believe in as well. I also encourage you to do this for every ministry that you are connected to, that you will know what the, you believe in, what the church stands for. But if you're desiring this and you said, I've read everything and it's all right with me. Or if God has moved you to the fact that no matter what is all right with you. Then I'm asking you, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Hallelujah. Father, uh, there are some who have different places and ministries that they've been in, but they haven't been there in a while. And they desire to be on watch. This is where we we'll watch out for your soul. You'll be able to participate. You'll be able to do the things that God is desiring for you to do while you're yet away from your home. Oh, so many times have you been in the places where people are, want to watch out for your soul and, you know, people have come and they have gone. Amen. But a lot of people have came upon this ministry and actually have stayed. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Amen. But if you desire to be put on watch, would you come? Would you come? Would you come? And just to add another caveat on to that, for anyone who is on watch that desired, that they are desiring and saying to themselves that I would like to be a member. I've been on watch long enough and I enjoy being a member of this church. The invitation is open for you. Amen. Glory to God. Well, most heavenly and kind Father, I have done what you have asked me to do. I have a few more things that I just need to say. First and foremost, if you're desiring prayer, stay on the line, call 1 302 202, use conference code. 940792, and we will be praying for those on the conference line and stuff of that nature. Amen. Glory to God for those that's there. Amen. We'll be there for just about a good 10 minutes or so that we'll be able to pray with you after we close up service. Amen. Father, I have done what you asked me to do. I brought forth a word, Father God, that you have said to me that you will not leave us for forsake us. The word has been preached, Father. A call has been made for those who desire to be saved. We pray for those who drop the ball. We open up the doors of the church, Lord. We even ask for those who desire to be on watch. And for those who are on watch, Father God, if they desire to be members. Lord, I have done everything that you have asked me to do. And now, Father, I ask you, Father God, that you bless every particular thing. Father, I ask you that you overflow in each and every one of their areas. God, that with their heads bowed and their hands together, 
I ask you, Father God, that you will continue to overflow upon them in such a special way, Father, that there will be a movement like never before in their minds, their hearts, their souls, and their spirit, that they will start to feel the anointing of you, Father, that there will be a movement in their mind, God, that will move them into areas, Father God, that they will be able to conquer the things that have been put before them, Father, and all the things that are trying to hinder them will be pushed away and moved to the side and pushed out of their areas, that they shall no longer have any hindrances in their areas, Father, and all the sicknesses and diseases, Father, Father God, that they'll be far away from them, Father, that some will grant upon you, Father, and you will lean upon them and give them healing. Father, for those who have ears, let them hear, for their hearts to be made as you have desired it to be done. Now, Father, may the Lord watch between me and thee, why we are absent one from another. Pray for each other. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory for those that are on the line and all those around this world. Happy Memorial Day from the Word of the Lamb Ministries unto us. We invite you, amen, to come back to us all through the week. Understand that June 11th, mark it down. We will be ministering our Sunday service in the morning along with a new holy word. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We'll be bringing the word in Meriden. Come on out and be with us. And don't forget to mark down Father's Day, a Father's Day service. Amen. Glory to God. Brothers with knowledge. Amen. We'll be bringing forth this wonderful program amen at our sunday morning service on father's day amen glory to the name of jesus come on out and be with us amen there's a couple of good things that are going to take place amen glory to god and once again amen glory to the name of jesus if you desire to help us with our book bags as we're going to south carolina we'll be in meriden and we'll also be in hartford amen giving out book bags amen we're going to start in in south carolina and we're going to work our way up and uh, the month after that we come back from there we'll be hitting on to to in august we'll be going into meriden and we'll be going into hartford amen glory to god come and help us out amen any particular thing will be good even if you only want to send one pencil amen we'll take that as well Glory to the name of Jesus. God bless each and every individual on this line. We appreciate you once again. And for those who desire prayer, amen, please feel free. 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792 and allow God to move within your lifetime. Amen. Glory to God. For those that are on Facebook, we love you. And we appreciate you. God bless you, Sister Miller. God bless you, Sister Bridget. God bless you, Sister Morales. God bless you for all those. Brother Eli, I see you out there. God bless you, sir. I appreciate you and all of those that are around you. If you desire just to give us a call, 1-302-202-1110. Use conference code 940792. Even just to say hello, we would appreciate that as well. We love each and every one of you. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all over there in, in wonderful Facebook land. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And blessings to you.